faithful to Dad. He was trying to get surveillance to put in my bedroom and my bathroom. I would have stashed away all the money because I'd be okay right now. Um, do you miss your ex-husband? Let's say, let's call him your ex-husband. I miss him so deeply. It's uh, pathetic. Really? I miss him every day. I have him with me. Really? Yes. You have him, you, have, you want to see him? Yes, I would like to. Do you oh. have him in a locket? Oh, let me see. This there is he is, the sweetheart. Our wedding. Right. When uh, we were kissing the doves and throwing him up. Oh, you had doves at your so, wedding. He was so tickled to death uh, that he was laughing at me. So I put the picture of him watching me throw the doves. Oh, up. like this? Oh. Mm, so that's this is me your, this and my is husband your, oh, wedding. Right. Do you think he's still thinking of you? Yes, I do. Yeah. Of course, yeah, look at him smile. Ah, oh, that's sweet. Well, <laughs> all I have to say is you gave him in his last year, she gave him, I think, lots of pleasure. Oh, yeah. Huh? I did. Yeah. I did. Do you find it surprising that a wife who has told the world, national TV and everyone else, about how much she loved her husband, about how special the relationship was, that it was about love and not sex, and told him how wonderful he was to her and how much she loved him, who caresses his picture the whole time she's on the stand testifying in front of the jury, who sits her picture up over there on the table and talks to it during testimony. My question is this, is that woman, are you telling me that you cannot tell this jury when the last time you talked to your husband was? No, sir, I can't. And am I to also understand you cannot tell this jury when the last time you saw him was? No, sir, I can't. Do you remember the last thing he said to you? I wish I could. I really wish I could. What it was about him that you I suspectfully you loved. It was not his fortune that first attracted you? Oh, no, sir, not at all. What happened was he paid me enough money not to have to go back to that place I was working at. And he took care of me and my son. That must have felt good. That felt wonderful for him to love me and my son like that. He took care of me for many years. When did he begin broaching the subject of marriage with you? A week after I met him. I never was going to marry him until I got myself established. I wanted to make something of myself first before I got married. So people wouldn't think, oh, it was this, you know, money person, you know? and backfired anyway. <laughs> How long did he it. chase you, in a sense? How long did he court you? Oh, he courted me till I married him. <laughs> How many, was it, was it years? It was two and a half years. And that's, was, that's one that of was the a biggest, key part of the case, right? That's, yeah, that's one of the big misconceptions, that. is that people mm -hmm. always emphasize a 14-month marriage, but they had a two and a half year relationship before yeah. they actually got married. The assumption was that you met him, took advantage of him, married him in a week. Yeah. You did not. No. He asked you to marry him and was after you for two and a half years. Yes, he Why was. Why did you finally accept? Because I promised him that I would marry him after I made something of myself, and I got to where I, I was the name, and I promised him, and, and it was time to do something, and I wanted to have children. To I owed it to him, I wanted kids, and it was time to get married. Well, he, well, but he couldn't have gotten ki given you kids, could he? We tried. You did? We tried, but it didn't happen. Was it difficult to be physical with someone that much older? No. Not at all? Not at all. Because I guess everyone imagines that, wouldn't you, Howard? Not really. Not no? really. Not, not knowing my client, not knowing where uh, Howard Marshall took her out of, and, and knowing her now, uh, the true love that they did have. So uh, to me, it's not, it's not difficult to perceive. I, I think maybe before I had met her, I you would have, have had, perceived yeah, it, as the audience would. Yeah. 
Uh, did you? Would you say you loved him? I loved him very much. No, without being in love, right? I mean, you weren't yeah. f physically. I, I wasn't physically. Oh my God, you hot, hot body. Mm -hmm. You know, like that. It was just. I loved him for so much. What he has he did for me and my son. I mean, I just loved him so. I've never had love like that before. I, no one has ever loved me and done things for me and respected me and didn't care about what people said about me. I mean, he truly loved me and I loved him for it. He was kind. He was very, very kind to me. Where did you and children. he live? We lived in Houston. That's where his business was? He had retired, right? Right, right. No, he went to work every day. What was his business? 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. He was in the oil business. Oil. Right. When he died, how old was he? He was 90. And what did he die of? Pneumonia. Did you know it was coming? I didn't know it was coming uh, that quickly. Were you with him when he died? No, I was not. You were home? I was out on a job. Actually. What kind of work we passed away? Uh, by telephone. Were you shocked? I was very shocked. Yeah, I was. Did you go right to the hospital? No, I had a seizure and went to another hospital. <laughs> you had a seizure? Yeah. You were that close? Yeah. Where was the reading of the will, Howard? You know, this is something that, uh, uh, it's a kind of a tough subject for her, um, but she, uh, she, because she was not close at all with Pierce Marshall, uh, to say the least. Pierce Marshall is her, his son? The son, right. Um, she wasn't informed. Of, that there was a will of, reading? Of most of the things that went on and, you know, wasn't able to get copies of documents and, and uh, you know, she really was kept out of the loop. I wasn't allowed to see my husband. What do you mean? She, uh... You weren't she, allowed to see the... prevented from... Uh, funeral? From, well, they, it's a, you know, it's a morbid story and... What? It's, I it's never the heard kind this of thing one. that uh, she couldn't go I don't to know if her husband's uh, funeral. Anna, they had separate funerals. They had ultimately had separate funerals. He wouldn't let me see my husband for uh, there was a uh, like thirty minutes per day. Yeah, there was there was limitations on the amount of time that she was could awake. See. No, I'm, we're talking about when Howard was alive. There was limitations on the amount of time. Or when he was in the hospital. That she could no, not. No, was at home. Even when he was at home. Well, couldn't didn't he have a say in it? <laughs> well, he wanted yes, he did. No, he they he didn't. You mean they kept you out of the house? There was uh, yeah. How could they do that if you're his wife? There was a guardianship of the person imposed. You uh, mean he was deemed incapable of making his own decisions? It wasn't over his finances, it was over his person. And, uh, you know, Pierce would say that it was for health reasons that he couldn't see someone for more than 30 minutes at a time. And the restrictions got loosened up mm -hmm. later, but. Boy, but when not you saw to him, point. didn't he say, I want to see you more? He held his hands out. And he was powerless. Mm -hmm. Yes. We'll let you get a little rest here. We'll be right back with Anna Nicole Smith and Howard Stern on this edition of Larry King Live. Don't go away.